gift, but it, it, she, she has a gift. She's uneasy about this thing that she's carrying. Any of you know that when it comes to your gift, many times you're uneasy about what God has given you. If you were to talk and interview people that are preachers, they would tell you they were terrified to preach. I know singers that are anointed to sing that are terrified to sing. I know people that God has blessed to open businesses, but they are terrified to open these businesses because there is an uneasiness that many times accompanies what God gives you. So to deal with that uneasiness, he will many times hook you up with people. But not only, church, will he hook you up with people, but he will hook you up with people who are further along than you are. Because the text teaches us that Mary is pregnant, but John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. Which means that Elizabeth had the baby first, which means she was further along than Mary was. The problem with walking with a, a mentor, a trainer, is because we don't like to surround ourselves with people that are further than we are. And I'm going to tell you something. If you are the best one in your circle, you need to get some new friends. If you're running with everybody and can't nobody sing better than you, ain't nobody smarter than you, can't nobody out preach you, can't nobody out dress you, you need to get you some new friends. Because you need some people that stretch you to grow. Musicians need to be around other musicians that are so skilled and anointed in their craft that they make you get down on your knees and say, Lord, bless me. So Timothy hooks up with the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is already an apostle. He's already healed the sick. God has already worked special miracles by the hands of Paul. But Timothy says, I know where I'm going, but I want to walk alongside of somebody who has already done what I'm believing God to do. Tell your neighbor, I don't even care if you're further along than me. Thank you, Jesus. If you believe in God to buy a house, hook up with somebody that's already bought one. If you believe in God to get married, run with folk that's already married. If you believe in God to have a mighty ministry, ask God to hook you up with somebody. And you walk alongside with them and learn because we do not know everything. Tell your neighbor, don't get mad at the preacher. So, a a as we, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, God leads us into purpose for our life. He leads us into these relationships. Two questions come, come to mind. Hallelujah. Who makes the best trainer? Who, who makes a good coach? Well, the NBA tells us that out of 30 teams, 22 coaches played the game of basketball. Doc Rivers played, George Carr played, Phil Jackson played, Byron Scott played, Maurice Cheeks, Terry Porter, Jerry Sloan, Eddie Jordan. All of these people, when you look at these people walking up and down the court, they are able to coach basketball. Guess why? Because they play basketball. So he hooks you up with somebody who has like talent as you do. He hooks you up. Go, I tell you what, go to, go to Acts 16. A fighter needs someone in his corner who has fought before because he can tell them how to dodge the punches and how to take it, how to get back up when you get knocked out. This is what qualifies. Look at Acts 16 because this next point, I'm not sure if we're going to get the dance today. I'm not sure, but I know it's a word from God. Acts 16, and he said there were... I'm in Luke 16. Let me get the Acts. Pray for me. Acts 16 says, Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy. Everyone say Timothy. The son of a certain woman who was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek. Verse number two, which was well reported by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Verse number three, him would, Paul, uh, him would Paul have to go forth with him, and he took and circumcised him because of the Jews. Come here for a second, brother, brother Marcus, just for a second, because I use illustrations so you can see what's going on. Everyone say trainer, trainer. Coach, coach, mentor. Say, I need someone to disciple me. 
in the use of my gift because I don't know everything. Now get this. The Bible says that you're Paul. He's Paul. He's already an apostle. He's already been converted. That's the number one thing. You need a trainer that's been converted. He's already had his Damascus Road experience. His eyes have come open. He's already done all of that. He runs into Timothy, and he sees something in Timothy. He can, a trainer. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because there are two types of people in the world. People that see you and see nothing. But other people that see you and see everything. Y'all know Simon told old girl she couldn't sing, but she got in Dream Girls and won an Oscar. She beat Beyonce. You do know that Michael Jordan's high school coach cut him from the basketball team. But when Paul looked at Timothy, he saw something and he said, I see, I perceive that there is a gift in this young man. So the first thing he does is he takes him and he does not give him a pen and say, write an epistle. He does not give him a piece of paper and say, write a letter to one of the churches. But he calls for a knife, brings him in the back room, and he circumcises him. What is the nature of a trainer, mentor, coach, disciple, trainee relationship? Many steer away from these relationships, number one, because we don't want to admit that we don't know everything. Secondly, these relationships many times are very, very, very painful. It's painful for somebody to have to circumcise your flesh. You can be seated. Because the trainer is able to look at the player with the gift and say, I can look at you and I see the gift. But I also see things in your life that if you don't cut them off, they will hinder your progress. You know, I, 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 I thank God that he blessed me with clothes and with house, a house and a car and a beautiful wife and all that. But this year, I thank God for something deeper. I thank God for people in my life that love me enough to tell me the truth. No matter how much it hurts, a, a trainer will look at you and say, you know what? You're a good worker, but you're just late all the time. A trainer would look at a, a young preacher and say, you can preach, but you don't live what you're preaching. A trainer would look at a singer and say, you can sing, but you just don't have the anointing. A trainer would get a boxer in the gym. He gets that boxer in the gym. And the, the, the worst thing that can happen to that boxer is for his trainer to tell him a lie. So that trainer tells him, look, you, you're a power puncher, but you don't have no endurance. So we need to build your endurance. That, that trainer, Shaquille O'Neal's trainer, told him the truth. You can rebound, but you can't shoot. That's painful, especially when you think you can shoot. Any, anybody know anybody? And I'm not talking about you, but somebody you know who think that they're really good at something that they're not good at? Thank God that we need some folk like Shaquille O'Neal's coach that told him, look, the last thing in the world we need you to do is to try to dribble and to try to shoot. All we need you to do is to get in the lane, and when it comes down, grab it. But now when you grab it, don't try to shoot it because you can't shoot. So, so these, these are people that God gives us in our life that can see what we have. Hallelujah. They can see what we have, but they can also see what's in us that will hinder the proper usefulness of our gifts. Go back to 2 Timothy. I thank God for being trained. I thank God for that. For having somebody in my life that God gave me that can walk alongside of me and I can walk alongside of them and not try to teach them but let them teach me. Let them pour into me. Let them look at my life and say, look, I'm not denying the gift but there are other things here that we need to get a knife and cut away with. Second Timothy chapter number one. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter number one. Look at verse number five. The Bible says in verse number five, great verse number five, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lo 